What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome into the Eagle Eye in the Sky. I'm your host, Rand Duffy, and today we're going to take a look back at the Eagles' loss against the Cleveland Browns. Obviously a tough loss to swallow, but going through the film, there were certainly some things that I wanted to take away, and one of the things I wanted to start off with was the run game, because obviously, look, that was a big point of emphasis for the Eagles going into this game, not only to keep Carson Wentz comfortable and, and get him into a rhythm, but also because of the elements, right? But in that kind of weather, you want to be able to establish the run, get things going, uh, and try and keep the game manageable. And I think when you look at what the Eagles did, there were two runs that really stood out to me as concepts that worked very, very well for them. It was the pin pool scheme out to the perimeter, and it was their tackle trap. So we're going to take a look at both of these schemes here, and we're going to start with one of their bread and butters really over the course of the last few years, and that's the pin pool scheme where you've got tight ends working inside and then you've got the offensive lineman pulling to the perimeter. Let's take a look at a couple examples of the pin pull. For the better part of the last decade, the pin pull play has been one of the staples of the Eagles offense. You can see here, you get the pins from the outside, the pulls from the inside. You need your tight ends to be active participants in the run game in order for these plays to work. And watch here the strong edge set by Richard Rodgers on this play. He pins the defensive end inside. you got Dallas Goddard working up at the second level. And then watch the pullers. You've got Matt Pryor getting the force player. Here comes Jason Kelsey for the most dangerous man in the hole. Gets up to the safety, Andrew Sandejo, and Miles Sanders gets sprung for a first down. Really nice run there on the opening drive from this Eagles offense. A couple plays later, you're going to see the same one going the opposite way. So you've got three pinners on the left. Here come the two pullers. This time it's Isaac and Jason Kelsey. But depending on the front, you could see that Jason Kelsey, instead of pulling, he's just going to leak up immediately to the second level to get that backside linebacker. You get Goddard working up to the, to the second level as well. There are your two pin blocks. You've got Sayamalu working out into space. Sanders runs through contact, gets the Eagles inside the five-yard line. So nice job on the pin pull there. And then one more example, again, going to the left side. There are your three pin blocks working outside in. Here come your two pullers with Kelsey and Sayamalu. Sanders is going to work off those blocks. He's going to be patient. You've got to let those blocks develop and do their work. You're going to see that Richard Rodgers, even though he initially loses, you can still see him kind of finish through this block, keep that defensive lineman from making the play. And then Sanders is, again, playing off the block from Kelsey and getting downhill. Nice job. The pin pull, always a good weapon for this Eagles offense. So those pin pulls, those are perimeter runs. And we, I covered there the position groups that really did a nice job on those concepts. Now let's take a look at a little bit of a different play. You know, we've talked a lot about the wham play and the trap play. One variation of that is the tackle trap. It's a little bit more unique than your typical trap, which is a guard coming from the backside to block a defensive tackle. With a tackle trap, you're going to have an offensive tackle coming from the backside. So it's blocked up a little bit differently. There are a couple other difficult blocks on that play. The Eagles ran it a couple of times in this game. We'll take a look at a couple of them right here. One play that was really effective for the Eagles in this game was the tackle trap, where a tackle comes from the backside to get the defensive tackle on the play side. The other big block is this one-on-one -on -one between the tight end and the defensive end on the backside. Here's the ball snapped. You're going to see those two blocks take into effect. You're going to see Dallas Goddard on the backside, really tough block. And then you've got Lane Johnson coming for the three technique. And if you freeze it, right when Miles Sanders gets the ball, you can see those two blocks work in unison to create the lane for Sanders. He's decisive downhill picks up a first down for the Eagles offense. That's on the opening drive. A little bit later, you see the same exact play. Here comes Lane Johnson to get the defensive tackle on the play side. Again, really difficult block on the back side for Dallas Goddard. He does a great job here on this block. But watch the defensive tackle. He sees the trap block coming. So he's going to cross the face of Lane Johnson. Really nice job by Boston Scott on this one. He is able to play through that, stays downhill for his landmark, nearly picks up another first down for the Eagles on the ground. So nice read there by Scott playing off the block. Lane Johnson did a nice job creating the seal. Later in the game, same play from the opposite side this time. Here comes JP. You got another tough one here on the backside for Dallas Goddard. This time it's Claiborne who actually reads this. He does a great job crossing the face of the tight end on the backside. That creates a, a tough spot for the running back, but Sanders does a great job playing off that cutting back off the butt of Dallas Goddard. Gets downhill, nearly moves the chains for the Eagles with this run game. Really good design there on the tackle trap. Was a good tool for the Eagles on Sunday. So I put the focus there on that last play, especially late on the job that Dallas Goddard had to do on the ground. And Goddard really has developed into one of the best two-way players at the position over the last couple of years. You know, look, you look at his ability as a pass catcher and then as a blocker, it really shows the kind of value that he has to this Eagles offense. And I think ultimately when you look at Goddard, this was a really good game for him in terms of seeing what he can do in those two areas as a, as a receiver 
and as a blocker. Just a couple of those plays. You've already seen him as a blocker a little bit here in this segment, but let's take a look at a little bit of a package I put together from some of his biggest plays in the game. Let's take a look at tight end Dallas Goddard here, and he's just turned into one of the best two-way players at the tight end position in the NFL. Here you're going to see that this motion from Rager brings the safety up close to the line of scrimmage, and now that creates the matchup. Dallas Goddard versus the safety Ronnie Harrison in a phone booth. Harrison does not have the Jets to keep up with Goddard, running a slot fade inside the numbers. You see vertically down the field, 30-plus yards for a first down. Nice job of the Eagles using pre-stat motion to create that. Now, a little bit later, you're going to see Carson Wentz drop back in the red zone, start to his left, a little bit of a zone beater concept over that way. But once he sees that route is not going to get open, he steps up in the pocket, scramble situation. Dallas Goddard uncovers in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Nice job by Goddard. That kind of reminded me of a play early in the game. This is the second play from scrimmage, opening drive. You're going to see that Dallas Goddard running into a crowd in the middle of the field. Carson Wentz steps up once again, gets his eyes downfield, and Goddard does a nice job uncovering in the scramble situation for a first down. Carson Wentz showing a little bit more faith. You can see in Dallas Goddard, especially coming back from injury, those two getting into more of a groove. But you can't be a two-way player without your ability on the ground game. We saw some plays uh, earlier in the show about his ability to win at the point of attack. You're going to see another example of it right here. Watch him here on the backside. A little bit of help from Richard Rodgers there on the double team, but love the finish from Dallas Goddard on the backside defensive end, Cameron Malvo. And then we'll see, once again, just one final play. Look at him here in the slot, top of the screen. You're going to see him just go after the linebacker in space. This is just the attitude Dallas Goddard brings to this Eagles offense. Great two-way player to have on your team. So good stuff there from Dallas Goddard. Now, obviously, this game was not all sunshine and rainbows for this Eagles offense, right? There were certainly some negative plays to take a look at. And two of the biggest ones resulted in directly in points for the Cleveland Browns. You had the interception returned for a touchdown by linebacker uh, Sion Takitaki. And then you had the safety as well. And I think you took a look at those two plays, obviously two big ones. And we're going to take a look at those. What led to those plays happening? Let's take a look at the film. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the plays that went against the Eagles in this game. We're going to start with the interception return for a touchdown. The play concept, two-man route. Jalen Riggers can act like he's blocking the linebacker, and then he's going to break towards the sideline off play action. Carson Wentz drops back, and he sees the safety patrolling over the top, taking away that route from Rager. He could have pulled the trigger there. I get why he did. He's trying to play it safe. He's going to go to the check down here on second and medium and he gets hit from behind, and it turns into an interception return for a touchdown. He's trying to play it safe there, trying to take what the defense gave him in his mind, and instead it turns into a turnover going the other way. I get why he didn't make the throw, but ultimately let's look at why the pass was picked off, because if he's not hit, this pass is not going the other way for a touchdown. Ultimately, this was a breakdown in protection. You can see here that the Eagles have seven guys on the line of scrimmage, five offensive linemen and two tight ends, Dallas Goddard and Richard Rodgers on the right side. My reading, my understanding of this is that Richard Rodgers is responsible for the most dangerous man coming from his side. And once he sees that the linebacker across from him is not coming, he gets his eyes inside, does not recognize that Denzel Ward, who is green dogging here, comes off the corner untouched. He impacts Carson Wentz. The ball floats up into the air. Sione Takitaki takes the other way for a touchdown. So breakdown of protection gets a free rusher home to Carson Wentz. It turns into an interception return for a touchdown. Later in the game, let's take a look at this safety. This is a three-man route concept, a flood concept for the Eagles. It's just perfectly defended here by Cleveland. You've got four defenders in that area. They're not stretched. That underneath defender is not sucking up hard on the flat. He gets good depth, takes away that intermediate route. Carson Wentz, if he can get to the backside, he's going to have Dallas got it open here but he's not able to get there because by the time he gets his eyes to the backside, the pressure has already gotten home. That's a safety. Eagles are forced to free kick away. Cleveland gets a field goal. This little five-point swing here proved to be pivotal in a five-point defeat. All right, so hopefully you guys got a little bit of insight there into what led those plays to happen that went against the Eagles, against their favor uh, in this game. Now, let's look at what created the biggest touchdown, I would say, early on for the Eagles. It's really a two-play sequence, right? It's one play on defense, one play on offense, two consecutive plays. You have a sack fumble by Fletcher Cox, and then you've got the touchdown pass from Carson Wentz to Richard Rodgers. Let's take a look at that two-play sequence right now. 
Let's take a look at a two-play sequence here for the Eagles. It's going to start with this Fletcher Cox sack fumble where he is doing work against Wyatt Teller, one of the best guards in the NFL this season. Off a of play action fake, you can see Fletcher is working the outside half of Teller. Then he just converts into a straight bull rush, gets home, gets the ball on the ground against Baker Mayfield. Alex Singleton in the backfield thanks to a green dog blitz. He jumps on it for a fumble recovery. That results in a direct, directly in a touchdown on the very next play for the Eagles offense. They come out in 12 personnel with both Dallas Goddard and Richard Rodgers. After a little bit of a shift, you can see uh, how the defense responds. You, again, keeping an eye on what the defense does in the secondary. They're expecting cover three, and one great way to beat cover three, four verts, where you're basically just going to play off that free safety. That safety started on the right hash, and so once Carson Wentz drops back, he's going to look to the left hash, and that's Dallas Goddard. Once that he sees that that you know that route's not going to be available to me, now he's going to work up to the right side. That's why the ball took a little bit longer to get over to Richard Rodgers. Once he steps up into the clean void in the pocket, he's able to hit Rodgers for a touchdown, the first touchdown pass of the day for Carson Wentz. And again, it started with attacking cover three with four verts, him understanding where is the safety. He's playing off the right hash. I'm going to work down the left seam away from that safety. Once that route wasn't available to him, he had to step, step to his right, step up in the pocket, and then he hits Richard Rodgers for a touchdown. Nice execution there by the Eagles defense and the Eagles offense to get points on the board. As we transition now to the defensive side of the football, one big thing that stood out to me was just the linebackers' aggressiveness downhill. Their ability to come and really just attack the line of scrimmage and make themselves available in the run fit. Not only that, and what that does for the defensive linemen as well, namely the defensive tackles, and it really helps to erase some of those double teams. It's a point of emphasis for the Eagles linebackers in this scheme, that attacking scheme downhill. I'll show you exactly why here on these three clips. One big part of the Eagles run defense in this game was their linebackers ability to attack downhill. That's a big part of winning in the one gap scheme. And you can see here, watch TJ Edwards and Alex Singleton. Their ability to attack downhill makes things easier for everybody and you create that wall. Look at all those white jerseys. You've got a hat in every gap. That means no double teams for the defensive tackles, and you've got to run for no gain. A little bit later, backed up situation. Watch all three of these linebackers. Once again, attacking downhill. And watch what that does. You've got three double teams against defensive linemen. Now those double teams are all gone because of how fast the, deep, the linebackers attack downhill. Malik Jackson able to get in there. Singleton does a nice job beating his block, and they're able to get a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Nice job across the board by the Eagles linebackers. And one more example, again, in the base defense, three linebackers on the field. Look how fast they're attacking the line of scrimmage. And again, getting downhill. TJ Edwards getting down there. Alex Singleton getting down there. That prevents the offensive line from creating those double teams, creates some car wrecks at the line of scrimmage. A lot of white jerseys to the the football Malik Jackson can fin finishing at the pile nice job by the linebackers overall in this game so to wrap this up just two young players I wanted to focus on here to wrap things up on the defensive side I want to look at Josh Sweat who had a couple of impact plays in this game he's consistently shown up throughout the course of this 2020 season it's just been so fun to watch him develop let's take a look at those two plays here Let's take a look at two plays here from Josh Sweat. And this first one is just going to be one of his patented pass rush moves, a move that's worked for him really, really well. See that flat and step inside with the inside foot, double hand swipe at the top of the rush against the first round pick, Jedrick Wills. Look at him turn the corner, accelerate, and get home for the sack. We've seen Sweat win on this move a couple of times here this season off the right corner. And he's able to win there for a sack. Love the celebration as well, wiping some sweat off the brow. A little bit later, big TFL in the run game. We're going to see that explosive first step. He's so fast off the ball. He beats the pin block from the tight end, gets into the backfield, disrupts this run play, forces Kareem Hunt to reverse course. He's got to cut back opposite. And now you're going to see Kareem Hunt getting into trouble, but the play's not done for Josh Sweat there because after he disrupts early in the down, you can see the pursuit from the backside. He comes back and ends up fin finishing this play. Nine-yard loss there on the run game. All starts with Josh Sweat, finishes with Josh Sweat. Great stuff there from Josh Sweat. Now for our last one, we're going to take a look at two plays from Eagles first round pick wide receiver Jalen Rager. One really nice route, one really nice catch. Let's take a look at the first round pick. I want to take a look at two catches here from Eagles first round pick Jalen Rager. The first one, a great route. And you're going to see him here win at the top of his stem. This is a tight split where he's lined up inside the numbers. Plenty of room to work out towards the sideline. Watch him hold that vertical stem, work towards the post. 
You see the anticipation throw from Carson Wentz, putting it outside the numbers. Really good snap at the top of the brakes, and I love the finish there from Jalen Rager to the ground for a catch on the first down. Backed up situation. Love seeing this from Jalen Rager because uh, that's a flash of what he showed during his time at TCU. He showed that ability to create separation at the top of the route, and then love the finish there from the first round pick. So good stuff there early in the game. Let's go to one a little bit later. This one on fourth and six. You're going to see him here lined up again. Another tight split, this time to the right side of the field. And you're going to see him now work on what's called a corner stop, where he's going to work the top of the stem, break to the corner, and then just cut it off, saw it back, come back to the quarterback, attack the football, and then you see him finish in a crowd there between two defenders. Nice placement there from Carson. Great finish there from Rager to bring down this catch for a first down. The Eagles converting on fourth down to keep a drive alive in the fourth quarter. Must have a situation if they're going to try and come back in this game. Nice to see Rager come back to the football and finish there in a tight spot. All right, so that'll do it for this week here on the Eagle Eye in the Sky. Hope you guys have enjoyed all of this footage. We'll be breaking all of these plays down and more over on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast, fueled by Gatorade. Myself, Greg Cosell, will be going through all of it. And now that you've got access to all of these plays, all of this footage, you've got something you can look at while you listen to the podcast. You can find that wherever podcasts can be found or right here on the Eagles YouTube page. As soon as the podcast goes live, it'll be posted right here to the Eagles YouTube page. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed these breakdowns. Thanks so much for joining us once again here on the Eagle Eye in the Sky. We'll talk to you later this week.